So starting from a very basic thing, really, what is heart attack? But unfortunately, majority of the cases happens abruptly. Do you want to shed a bit of light on it? Like, you know, a lot of my patients that I see in clinic, they've got like high cholesterol. You must have heard so many stories, you know, oh, I met him last night in a dinner and this morning he had a heart attack. Hello, welcome to the FUH cast. My name is Dr. Amna Hushnud. I'm a family medicine consultant, and today we have got Dr. Saeed Saqib Nazir with us, um, an intervention cardiologist um, and a lead of Cath Lab. Welcome. Thank you. We are going to discuss today about the heart diseases, the acute and the chronic, the serious and the non sinister ones. Well, thank you very much for having me today in this podcast. Um, as we understand, these podcasts are very important in spreading the awareness and um, I'm delighted to be here and I hope today's discussion will have a very positive impact to the community and the society. Absolutely, we're going to talk about, you know, like I'm going to ask you a few questions about what are the common things that you normally see as a cardiologist, as an intervention cardiologist. We're going to discuss a little bit of symptoms, treatment, and maybe some questions that, you know, the, the normal public or the non-medical people would have about the heart attack. So shall we begin? Yeah, please. Right. Um, so starting from a very basic thing, really, you know, you see a lot of, probably you see a lot of patients with, with something called heart attack. Could you explain a little bit more? Or what is heart attack? Uh, right. Well, heart attack is a condition where heart doesn't get enough blood supply. As you know, our body, our organ needs blood, uh, which is full of oxygen and nutrients. So there are three arteries which supply the heart. If one of these heart arteries get compromised, get blocked, totally or partially, uh, which disrupt the blood flow to the heart, then as a distress signal, patient experience some symptoms. And the predominant symptom is chest pain, uh, which is usually above the diaphragm. And it would be anywhere, front, back, uh, which can move around. It can go down to the arms, up to the jaw. And it really make the person feel unwell, right? They feel distress. It may be associated with shortness of breath, sweating, dizziness, and sometimes people collapse, what we call cardiac arrest. So that is heart attack. Now, when this phenomena happens, it happens due to rupture of a deposition of plaque. It's basically built of cholesterol, fatty things. So when it gets ruptured, it it releases this cholesterol debris into the blood stream and blood doesn't like cholesterol. At that moment in time, the blood starts to get thicker, thicker and forms a blood clot which disrupts the blood supply 100%. Now, this state of no supply of blood to the heart muscle is time sensitive. Mm -hmm. If you do not reestablish the blood flow within two hours, that's the golden sort of uh, time, then there will be permanent damage to the heart muscle. So heart becomes eventually weak. Not only that, this sudden disruption of the blood supply can lead to a very sinister heart rhythm condition mm -hmm. causing cardiac arrest where patients lose consciousness and if you don't do what we call CPR, the resuscitation, death is inevitable. So it is a serious condition. So the main thing is this kind of patient has to be rushed to a hospital yeah. where they receive the treatment. Mm -hmm. Now, since we've been talking about symptoms and you've explained that, you know, that, that there are quite a few symptoms and sometimes like, as you mentioned, dizziness or, you know, having a bit of a vague pain, you know, as we see like in movies or in dramas, like yeah. someone's having a heart attack and it's quite dramatic. Is that always the case? It can, not always, it can present two ways. One is insidious, gradual, like someone is having chest pain for the last two, three days and then boom. Yeah. So... Uh, that's good in a way because patient gets enough time to seek medical advice. 
But unfortunately, majority of the cases happens abruptly. You must have heard so many stories, you know, oh, I met him last night in a dinner and this morning he had a heart attack. So, you know, it's a dynamic process. That blockage was stable last night when he was having dinner, but this morning something happened and that block, blockage got ruptured, initiating that phenomena which I have already explained it to you. Are there any symptom differences between genders, like male and female? Like, are they going to have different kind of symptoms or is it pretty much the same for both genders? That's a good question you have asked. In general, it's the same, but with, when it comes to gender, uh, interestingly, women, they may experience slightly different kind of symptoms. Commonly, we say the pain is in the middle or on the left side. In women, it could be on the left, it could be somewhere else, or they may just say, I'm not feeling well. Mm -hmm. The symptom may be very, very vague. It could be dizziness, it could be something else. So they may not have that typical symptoms. And when you mention about the gender, uh, I must uh, point this out. When we look at all the research studies over the decades, um, we discovered that women had been unfortunately neglected when it comes to get treatment of heart attack in due time. Uh, there are many reasons for that. Uh, we had this false uh, belief that heart attack doesn't happen unless women develop menopause. Uh, that's not true. They can have it earlier than that, number one. Number two, as you know, as a gender, women, they are usually shy, right? They, they think, oh, going to hospital is, can be embarrassing, I'm fine. So that, that thing of the gender mm -hmm. uh, always persists. They are shy. Um, so they don't come in time. So the message to our uh, female viewers is that please, uh, yes, the incidence of heart attack is lesser than men, but nowadays the uh, incidence of heart attack and stroke is also increasing in women. Right. Are you going to, is, is it all right to say that women have got better threshold probably, pain threshold probably, that's why they don't Well, that, 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 that I don't know. That may be a debatable topic. <laughs> right, okay. Now, what, when you were explaining the, the procedure of like, when you were explaining how heart attack develops, you mentioned cholesterol. Do you want to shed a bit of light on it? Like, you know, a lot of my patients that I see in clinic, they've got like high cholesterol. They're quite younger, younger people, like, you know, younger population, they're like 30s and 40s. How would you sort of treat that? And how would you just shed a bit of a light on it? What should we do? Yeah, um, I would like to touch on two points. Uh, you have mentioned that we are having patients who are younger nowadays having heart attack. That's a very uh, important message I would like to convey. Um, it's not only in this country, it's a global phenomenon now. Younger people are having more heart attack and stroke just because of you know, the lifestyle. Absolutely. And younger people, they have this uh, con concept of idea that they're not vulnerable because they're young. Yeah. yeah. So they have to come out of this um, idea. Everyone is vulnerable. Cholesterol, it's a very uh, interesting and very important topic. We all know that there are several risk factors uh, which I'm sure you're going to ask me later on. Absolutely. But let's, let's concentrate on high cholesterol. Cholesterol is the most important risk factor when it comes to heart attack and stroke. Um, the reason being, historically, we, we, we always think of high blood pressure and diabetes and smoking as risk factors, right? Uh, but this high cholesterol is, is something uh, which is not difficult to diagnose, but you can only diagnose it by going to a doctor. For blood pressure, you can buy a machine and you can check at home. You can borrow it from your parents, right? Yeah. Mm, for sugar, you have home kit, Absolutely. right? You can, you can get it from your friend or if you go to the mall, you can get it checked. But when it comes to cholesterol, it's not that easy, easy. way. You have to go to a doctor and get it checked in the lab. So this is one of the reasons why 
people are not very much familiar with cholesterol. Yeah. Now, uh, what is cholesterol? These are basically fatty substance in the blood, uh, which comes from what we eat, and obviously how it's uh, being produced inside our body. So it's, there's a metabolic factor as well. Now, when we see a person with high cholesterol, either they are consuming food which contains a lot of cholesterol or fatty things, or they're not taking too much of uh, uh, cholesterol containing food, but it's the body yeah. which is not destroying mm -hmm. enough cholesterol. So they're building up. And when they build up and they float in the bloodstream, they get deposits in the blood vessel. Remember, blood vessels are the carrier of the blood. Absolutely. So they try to stick in the inner wall of the blood vessel, and we call them plaque. And over the time, if you don't do anything about this cholesterol, they will keep building up and making the lumen of the artery narrower and narrower. Uh, so that's cholesterol. Now, we again have a concept that one has to have a very significant blockage, 80, 90% blockage to get a heart attack. Again, that's a myth. No, a person who even have 10, 20% of blockage, they can have a heart attack. Okay, it all depends how that blockage is behaving, when it's going to rupture, which I told you. Yeah. So, so that, that, that's why it's important. Your other question was what to do with it. Yeah. Right? It's a very tricky question uh, because in our practice, we see a huge number of patients who we define as borderline high cholesterol patient. Now, this borderline... Uh, uh, high cholesterol level used to be a gray area in the past. But now we have newer technology like CT calcium score. It's a simple, you know, x-ray CT scan. Nothing goes inside the body, no injection. It's just x-ray. You lie down, three minutes, zap. We have done the test. It is one of the best tests and tools available to understand what are we going to do with all these borderline high cholesterol patients, right? Do they need treatment or they do not need treatment? If they don't need treatment, that's fine. But remember, we cannot forget about this patient. We need to keep them under our radar. So every three years, five years, they need to be reassessed because with time we age, Absolutely. right? What's normal for today may be abnormal after three years or five years. So if someone has been diagnosed with borderline high cholesterol, don't think you're fine. You need to be monitored. Um, and then the CT calcium score also guide us what dose of cholesterol loading we should put on the patient. What should be our target? Because we have various targets, 50 milligram deciliter, 70, 100. So, so that's cholesterol. We must use this new technology mm -hmm. to capture who are at risk. And also, high cholesterol is a single risk factor. There are others, diabetes, high blood pressure, family history. Family history yeah. so, so that needs to be considered. Yeah. While we are talking about cholesterol, obviously cholesterol and statins go hand in hand, doesn't it? So, and there is a lot of like, a bad reputation of statins out there um, and a lot of like people are very reluctant um, on taking it thinking like it's it's been demonized quite a lot uh, what do you think about statins and do you think that you know even the younger patients with um, if they need it it's it's okay to take it um, again it's it's a question which I love uh, uh, because um, I consider statin as uh, a drug which has revolutionized the uh, treatment and, and prevention of heart disease. Um, I tell my patient, it's an anti-aging medication for the heart. Does that make sense? Very well put, yeah. Yeah? So, so if someone would like to prevent heart attack and keep the heart artery young, then statin is a wonderful drug. Only 10% patient complains of the commonest side effect, which is muscle ache or body pain. 
But study have proven that 50% of this 10% get the pain because of the psychological effect. Yeah. Because they know it may cause and they think the pain is because of the statin. That's not the fact. But yes, 10% of patients can suffer genuinely from body ache and for them there are other options. Uh, the other side effects is uh, affecting the liver enzyme which is nothing serious. As a doctor we do keep an eye on that. Uh, so that's, that's, that's it. It's all bad press. From now on then there will be something about statin. But I've got good news for the viewers. Hopefully um, in a year time we will, we will be having oral tablets which are not statin. And they are as <clears throat> effective as statin. So good news is coming up. So this is FUH Cast and we'll see you soon.